And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat, everybody on YouTube for round three. We are uh, just joining in right in the middle. <laughs> it looks like, looks like we were a little late. We were talking about the new Sharima cards. Looks like we're a little late. We only got two minutes left to write down our opponent's decks. I am not really quite ready, but you know, here we are. All right, so let's see. I'm probably just going to ban this deck right here, I'd assume. Zoe Aphelios. That seems difficult. I don't know. I may just ban this thing, actually. Do I want to deal with Trundle, Trindamir? And all this? I don't really want to deal with this. Maybe we just ban that. Okay. This is similar to, like, the last deck I just wrote down. Poro Cannon. I can maybe just kind of write this down really quick. One Death Ray, three Rummage, three Fizz, two Stress Testing, no Urchin, uh, three Bot, three Improvement, three Mystic Shot, three Get Excited, so not two, we got three. Three Pick a Card, only two Suit Ups now, and then two Gotcha, one Mind Meld. And then three bot, three fate, three... Yeah, so okay, so I got that one written down. Um, two skies descend? Dude, skies descend is busted. Oh man, I don't know which one of these I want to ban. I guess I'm going to ban... Yeah, skies descend is scary... My opponent's smart. That card is great. I guess I'm going to ban that. So one troll, three feast. Two freeze. Alright, well. <laughs> didn't have much time. My opponent has forfeited the match. What is this? We got another hour to kill? Come on. Come on. Really? We're, we are unstoppable. We're just too good. That's what it is. We are too good. All right, we got another hour and nine minutes. That's really all it is. Another, all right, so there we go. Those of y'all on YouTube, another hard-fought win. This was, um, you know, predictable. My opponent could not handle our amazing decks. Let's go ahead and write this down. For the record, we are 2-1. and one. We are so good at this game. This is what happens whenever you, you prepare a whole lot and you play a lot for the week leading up to the tournament is you do really well. You know, like you get 3-0 wins fairly easily like we did, um, you know, that, that's just what happens. You know, it's it's uh, always good to, to, you know, be prepared and uh, destroy your opponents. And uh, we're pretty awesome. So we'll be, we'll be back for round four and maybe get another 3-0 in round four. Who knows? All right. Uh, so there we go. There's round three. All right, y'all on YouTube, thanks again for watching. See you back for round four. Bye. All right, we're back. Round four, I guess, and welcome everybody here on, on Twitch chat here on YouTube. Here we go, round four. Uh, we got four minutes. Uh, we are going to probably ban this one and just deal with the two bilge water decks. I think that's what, yeah, I think I just, I don't really want to deal with that um, big scary deck. Let's take a look at this one. Is this just the same as like our very first opponent? Is this just the same list? I'll just, I'll just write it down again. I already kind of threw away that piece of paper. It's actually just sitting right over there. But th here we go. Three Blade. Squire. Three Crack Shot Corsair. So it looks like people are starting to replace some Iron Blisters with Lounging Lizards. And I don't really know what I think about that. I feel like Ballista is a better card. But I don't know. People are... 
people are replacing them with lounging lizards, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I feel like Bliss is a better card. Lounging is an elusive blocker. Why does this deck care about elusive blockers? If I'm playing if I'm playing this deck, I, I care about killing my opponent, not about blockers. Like I want I want the ballista on turn three aggro. Like I guess on turn eight you'd rather have the lounging lizard. Alright, so this opponent's playing two jack and the one Farron. My last opponent played only one jack, one Farron. Um, but that's that's the thing, like I would I would just play like I think that these two lizards should just be a third ballista and a second Farron. Like Captain Farron is amazing. <clears throat> But <clears throat> my last opponent top decked really well on exactly turn eight. They drew Captain Farron <laughs> exactly on turn eight. And that's, I guess that that's all you need. You only need the one, right? If you're going to draw it exactly on turn eight to win you the game, you only need the one. All right. What do y'all think? Is my opponent showing up this time? I don't even know like what decks I'm playing at this point. It's been, what, three hours? Yeah, it's been three hours since I played a game with with my decks. I don't I don't even know what I I don't even know what I'm playing. So no ruinations. We don't have to play around ruination. We don't have to play around Ledros atrocity. Um, but you know, so that's the good part about like knowing their deck list is I would definitely play again play around ruination or at least try to try to play around ruination. But we don't have to worry about that. Ban phase selecting or starting soon. All right, so this deck, just to kind of check it out before we ban it. But yeah, it said one Ledros, two Atrocities in here. A couple Field of Rush. But yeah, I, I, I don't really want to deal with that deck. Okay, so they are here. They banned a deck. All right, so last turn, last time we started with the Heimer Ezreal, and we lost. So let's start over here. Right, we got we to gotta switch it up. Okay, what should we keep and mulligan? I'm thinking of mulliganing the sentry. No, I guess the sentry's probably pretty good in this matchup. They have the attack token on turn three and I stun with it. I mean, do I just keep, I guess I just keep everything. Like Death's Hand doesn't kill, Death's Hand doesn't kill Misfortune. I guess Death's Hand's gonna be just trading down. Yeah, I guess we'll mulligan Death's Hand. It's just gonna trade, it's gonna be like three mana to kill a one or a two mana unit. And so that's not great. Let's get to it. If I I probably would have mulligan demolitionist if I didn't have the jagged butcher. I liked having jagged butcher also. Like I liked having the combination of the two of them. For the glory of so they kind of combined well. But then again, maybe I just shouldn't have played it, though, because now I don't have the mana for this. Yeah, I guess I just shouldn't have played the Demolitionist right there, though, should I? I don't have that mana for those two together. Who's gonna get in my way? Say your farewells. <laughs> Run while you can. Good trade. Hmm. Thinking about going Twisted Red? Or just playing Sprayfin? And then... If I play Sprayfin... 
they probably play something before attacking next turn, and it could be Gangplank, and then, like, Twisted Red after they play a Gangplank would be really important. Go Twisted Red, then Flock, and then Block here. Yeah, like, that. this could be great. I've got us covered. We live here. That's my best play against Gangplank. They did not play Gangplank, though. So, I will play Gangplank. I'll make corpses of them all. Who's angry for action, eh? Old Jack. Lock the doors! Old Jack. Be nimble. Deal me in. That ain't gonna happen. Let's see. I mean, I guess I could let it... I guess I could just let it happen. I go down to 15. Because if I use Flock, then... This thing only does one damage and it doesn't kill the Crackshot Corsair. I guess I just let it happen. Right? Because otherwise they would keep the Crackshot Corsair alive. And then I also wasted a Flock. Gotta trust your instincts. I think I'm just gonna let it happen. I'm a people person. And now I have one flock to finish the jack, and then I also have a death's hand There's plus flock. Um. Let them play, hounds. Left them. They're at seven. If they don't break, they'll burn. Hmm. So this is gain two life if I play Ravenous Flock right here. Make the Empire proud. I think I'm just more scared of. I know. So I know I go to. You know, I'm going to eight. I'm just more scared of, like, Gangplank from them, right? Like, it's it's basically, like, Gangplank and Captain Farron. I mean, I guess... Like, because even if this is Decimate, Decimate. Like, I'm not dying to that because I'm attacking and killing them before that. So I'm, I'm just keeping these two together to, like, kill, like, a Gangplank. Slash another Jack the Winner or something like that. Keep up, keep up! All right, so that grabbed a fervor. So we know they have a fervor. That messes with my cards here. I never so if I go Death's Hand, they go fervor. I go to five. And then I flock this thing. So I only take one additional damage, but it gets rid of the fervor and it gets rid of like one of their manas. So they're only gonna have two mana to play something. This open attack should kill them. But then again. Is there any reason not to play Why would I not play Farron? I guess Hesitations the only reason not to So I go to five. Yeah, because if they have if they have decimate in hand and then fervor, like if those are the two cards, that's why I would not play Farron. So th there's no reason to play the Farron. Okay. <clears throat> so there's win number one. Got there. Outplay. All right, easy choice for us. Which deck we're gonna play? Hi, Merez. All 
Alright, we lost this matchup last time. Yud, thanks for thanks, Yud. I'll shoot the wings off of thanks for keeping that sub going. I appreciate that. I am back. The snow apocalypse is over, and we're good to go. We take one more damage this way, but we get the Enraged Yeti in our deck. Over there. I save one damage by playing Mystic Shot right now. That can't be worth it. I need to give them priority, but I can't just pass. Let's get it, crew. <sighs> yeah. Another deck's just filled with two health things, so like maybe this. Or maybe that could have been better, but it's. Hard to say. I don't. I didn't really just didn't want to do two damage to my enraged yeti that much. Try me. So that's three for gangplank. Noxus lives on. Remember, you never saw me. Yeah, again, specifically the 3-2, it would have been a better result for me to play the Yeti first and then Avalanche. I was I was kind of more worried about, like, Demolitionist. I was kind of thinking that maybe they would be going there. But yes, again, specifically what exactly what happened, Yeti first into Avalanche would have been better. Alright, come on, Kindly Tavern Keeper. That's real. 14. Don't blink, or you'll miss me. We could get the seven mana Frelior card that heals your Nexus no equal to wiser. something in your hand. Really, after I just wasted Static Shock? Hmm. Two mana gems. That means I only have 11. I won't even be able to feel the rush the next turn. In position. Boom. You're between me and glory. I'm down to two. Basically because of fervor, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't like shoot that thing first because of fervor. Yeah, they they just oh they just had all three decimates in their hand. That must be nice. I was kinda going for like maybe setting this up and uh, you know give it all um, you know, everything there. But yeah, they just had they just drew all three of their decimates. Alright, so it's gonna be between our Heimer Ezreal deck that has not won a game yet. 
for us against Gohard now. Okay. <laughs> exactly what we wanted, a second Heimer. Haven't made this Ezreal Heimer deck look too good, but I think we may turn that around here. May turn it around. A game. Go on then. What will you have? Really wish that was Trapper. I don't change fate, but I can see it. Really wish that was Trapper. And if I, if I didn't, if I don't have the Tribune and Probulator, maybe I don't even play that. I mean, they they have Go Hard. That's a pretty good late game card. You know, Go Hard and Doom Bees, that kind of stuff. Every point matters. You know, yeah, so like they don't have Ledros. That will cut my life total in half anyway, like where the each individual point doesn't matter as much. Knows me now. So as far as removal goes, they only have Vengeance to kill Heimer. They just drew a card off of the fleeting. Didn't know the boss is Don't know much, do ya? So that can go hard. <sighs> Kill my 3 2 with the go hard if I want to play Heimer this turn. So if I do play Heimer, they go hard my 3 2. I am not looking great. So their spells are go hard, glimpse, salvage, withering whale. I guess oh, man, withering whale is even worse. So yeah, because if I try to slow kill this, they go Withering Whale. It's even worse. Right, I can just challenge that. Never mind. Okay, so this is... Yeah, this is a good thing to do. Just challenge. Vulnerable. So we played a butcher, two pool sharks. One go hard, one deck hand, one glimpse, one fortune croaker. Order entropy, a never ending cycle. For silver I talk, for gold I kiss them. Full blast! <sighs> yes, yes, again! Second go hard. Yeah, I mean they could they could go hard the th this three one either way. Like it, yeah. Like so, sure they can go hard the turret, but they can they can go hard this also. I mean it's not like it's not like it gets better for me if I don't cast the go hard or like don't cast the turret. Let's talk about your turret. I can still play the turret. So I take three. Keep up. 
ten. Unacceptable advancement in ballistics. All right, so the ne their next one's pack your bags. Honestly, not sure what I want to do. I th I'm thinking about just passing. The more times we pass, though, the easier it is for them to find another pack your bags. But of course, it also gets me closer to this field of rush. All right, Cortex says pass. I'll pass. Never lost a fair game or played one. Blue as the serpentine. I think I would rather keep this Tribeam and probably later. I'm out. Um, you know, as far as like holding onto a card. And I, because I do want to play the Storm Lobber, because the Storm Lobber does level up the Heimer, so like that our, our next Heimer will be leveled up. So now, you know, like we have leveled Heimer, which is which is really good, right? Because instead of playing one health um, turrets, now they're going to be two health turrets. That's very useful. And I just trade because instead of just having everything die to a packer bags and just have it, having these turrets die to packer bags anyway, um, I will take out some units with me. Because like the the strength, the real strength of their deck is going wide. Oh, packer bags cost five these days now, right? So I guess I could have played this. Is being able to go wide, you know, like. Like, kill my stuff and then, like, attack with a bunch of small things. And so, the more small things we can kill, Where do you stand the better. On cold shots? So, if I play this progress day, I'll get a 9-9 nine -nine and still have three things. Three By three things, I mean three mana. If I pass and they just attack like this, I guess I just have Heimer block, like, a pool shark and take three and go to 14. I think that's okay. I'm always up for a round or two. Hold it, partner. Thing does survive pack your bags. Three mana tribeam and probulator is interesting. All right, so they gotta start over with the Gohards. All right, so that's the that's the third pool shark. I get I haven't really been writing down what they've been playing too much. Not enough, at least. This only gets me a two drop right now. I think that's still my best card, though. Did they get that Gohard from a burble fish? Uh. 
Was that purple fish go hard? Like a fish in water. <laughs> Uh, that would be pretty mean if that was purple fish go hard. We may just die to five damage packer bags the rest of the game. Possible. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't paying attention. I should have been paying attention to what they got, the old witch card they got with the, the purple fish. We need more kindly tavern keepers in here, I guess. We need we need to be able to heal our nexus more. We're just getting you know, like we're just getting burned out with all nexus damage with this deck. That's just how we've lost you know, we've lost three games with this deck so far, and all three games have just been No 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 no. Well the one was the Fiora that I drew really bad and played bad. Um besides that the other two were just all Nexus damage. Okay, no, so they they got sapling toss. Of course, with the purple fish, obviously that wasn't in their deck. So they're just drawing, just they're just naturally drawing all the go hards. So we are going to be harsh winsing, harsh wins. This, these two purple fishes. Yeah, they just they just keep on. So they've just drawn what seven go hards, but then they've had two spray fins. Cannot afford to take that damage. Um, we're pretty close to ice quaking. We don't need to ice quake. <laughs> Jenny. They're at ten. Oh, so pretty sure I just play Field of Rush. Yeah. If I attack like this, they block Overwhelm and Floor Be Gone. Oh, I'm running out of time. I should have paid attention to that time. I was running out. But they would not take lethal six, eight. Yeah, they would take eight. Okay. That will do. I just put them up there. I was going to figure out how exactly I wanted to order it. Withering Whale and Vengeance are their only fast speed spells. Um, that was their only two fast speed, and they already played one Vengeance, but I was just going to try to figure out what I wanted to do against Withering Whale. But... Victorious! Okay. Alright, we'll take it. We are three and one. Look at that. We're doing good. Three and one here in the seasonal tournament. That means with the hitting the three wins means that we're gonna be able to get the card back. So whatever the seasonal card back uh, looks like, we'll have that. 
for having three wins, and we're going to try for a four and one, which will, would be our record. So this is the second seasonal tournament ever. The first seasonal tournament, we did go three and two. So this is the second seasonal tournament. So we're going to, at worst, also go three and two. Um, so there we go. All right, that's round four. Uh, nothing, nothing for four wins. It's only, um, it's only just if you get three wins, you get a, a card back, and if you advance to the top thirty-two, which should be five and zero oh, to advance the top thirty-two, then you play on the second weekend. You know, like they're big, um, you know, it's a you know big event streamed on Twitch, and and uh, you know like there's money for everybody in the top thirty-two. Um, but it is possible for four and one to get to the top thirty-two if there's not all one thousand and twenty-four people playing. You know, then it's not all five O's. Um, so, you know, we don't know, you know, we don't know that. So I guess it's still possible, but you would think out of the four ones, you'd got to have a good tiebreaker. And I would think with losing the first round and having some opponents not show up, I would think that my tiebreakers wouldn't be good enough. So I, I, it's hard for me to imagine <laughs> that we could make the top 32, but you, you never know, you know, like we, we're going to play the next one, try to get to four one and just see what happens. Um... Oh, also, wait, what? Cordek? Cordek says fourth win gives upgrade to epic prismatic chest. So that's, this is new. This, you know, because prismatics weren't a thing before. Um, so no, I did not know anything about that. But I guess I'll try to figure that out here in a little bit. We, we're we going to have a um, good 30 minutes before our next one. So those of y'all on YouTube, I'll try to figure that out. Um, whatever that meant with the fourth win with some uh, prismatic chest for epic prismatic chest um uh so i'll go take a look at that all right but there we go that's round four picked up a win we are three and one uh, again those of y'all on youtube thanks for watching i really appreciate it hit that like button leave those comments let me know how you did in your seasonal tournament uh, if you're winning um or or if you're losing either way if you were if you qualified really what i want to know is what decks you played and how they did all right but thanks again for watching and i'll see you for the next video and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for round number five. Let's see if we can get the four one. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so we're facing Twisted Aphelios, Zoe Leeson, and Shen Fiora. I think I'm going to be banning Shen Fiora. As you all know, I, I think incredibly highly of Shen Fiora and I, I, it's a really difficult deck to play against and to beat. So I think that's what I'm going to be banning. So let's write down the other two. So we got one uh, Spell Thief. Okay, three Buxtapus. And I'm writing these down in two different columns. I like writing down the spells in one column and the units in the other, but you know, writing down how many and... Um, but then I can kind of see the See the mana curve, and I, I like splitting them up. One Lunari Priestess, two Solari Priestess. Lots of Twisted Fate, Sprayfin, Burbly, Burblefish today. We're actually playing Moonlight Affliction. So instead of the third Hush, they have one one Moonlight Affliction. Okay, let's see our other deck. Uh, this is the one that I'm going to be just kind of checking this out. But pretty sure we're banning this. Yeah. Rush is great. Yeah, I don't want to deal with that. Okay. Um, we have three Zoe. Three I. Uh, three Goat. And then uh, I'm, I'm just writing down Veil, Veil Temple in the units section. I know it's not a unit, but it, it requires unit mana. All right, and then spells. We're gonna have one uh, spell thief. So both decks will have a spell thief. My opponent really likes guiding touch. They're playing three guiding touch in each deck. No sun bless vigor. Two bastion, two deny. All right, so we're gonna have to beat two targon decks. That's not easy to do. Targon is the best region. And the opponent has forfeited the match. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> so
So, I mean, th there we go. Like, that's that's our result of our tournament, I guess. We're going to have, um, you know, three three people not show up. So, we get three 3-0 three -oh wins. Um, so, it kind of it kind of feels like once people lose one time, they just kind of give up, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, I guess we'll kind of figure out if... I mean, so you have, so basically you only have that five minute period where you have to hit like ready, check in, right? So even if, if you're like, you know, <clears throat> this is like, this could definitely be opponents that don't like that they meant to be playing, but you know, like maybe they're, you know, like reading some article or, or doing something else, maybe cooking a pizza, you know, like doing something else in there and they just don't really realize that, hey, you have like that little five minute period, you got to check in. And if you don't check in, um, you know done you know like that's it so uh yeah it's it's sunday yeah people have jobs responsible you know like you know they yeah they have like their kids act up for a little bit that they they go over there um things things sh can happen so um we did find out um let me get to this for those y'all watch on youtube last last um the end of the last video I was saying that there wasn't anything else for four wins, uh, but this this is the uh, picture here. So this is what this is the we're doing the open rounds right now, and then if we get to the top thirty-two, then you know we could win money if if we get there. But so this is all competitors. You get the icon if you play one win. You get an essence pouch, so you can you can earn prismatics basically with this. Also, the second win is a common prismatic chest because before it was just the card back for three wins, and that's what I was talking about was trying to get to that card back but now uh now you can get some prismatics and you know uh, have a rare prismatic chest we will have an epic prismatic chest for getting the four wins didn't have to work too hard for it um yeah you know didn't have to work too hard for it but i guess we got it um so if both players don't show i assume both players get a loss Right, you can't you can't win if you don't show up. So it would just be both players get a loss and are eliminated from the the event. Because I assume that once once you like if you don't show up for round two, or, then you're just dropped and you don't you don't play around three through four. And so um, if don't both players don't show up, just neither win and neither people move on. So I guess it's it's possible. You know, four four and uh, one. Uh, from what I was told also in chat that the the tiebreaker is not like to, to, to determine like if if some four ones do make it to the top 32 you know we don't know if they will or not but if they do I believe the tiebreaker is not on just like who you played in this tournament thankfully because we had so many people drop out but it will be what your what whatever your top standing was in the leaderboard as you can see I'm currently in 72nd place um I was higher than that before. This is without me playing for an entire week. I think I was around 50th, 50 to 60, something, something like that before um, I stopped playing for, for this past week because of the Snowmageddon. So it's possible. So like maybe there's 60 people ahead of me in tiebreakers. You're just kind of estimating 60, 70 people ahead. Maybe out of those 60, 70 people, you know, if like five, four ones get in, maybe only four of them, four out of those 60 went exactly 4-1 right because if they went if they didn't show up or if they went 5-0 or if they went um you know 3-2 or worse you know like so they have to be they have to go exactly 4-1 so there's there's probably not that many people that did show up and did play all the rounds that went exactly 4-1 you know especially like those top people on the leaderboard probably you know a good amount maybe went 5-0 or you know didn't have the best record and went 3-2 or worse um, so who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll be able to get into the top thirty-two. We don't, we don't know. I would say it's not a very good chance, but there's a chance. Uh, yeah. So the leaderboard was locked. Um, it's, it's, it's still, you know, it's not locked technically, but it was for for this purposes. It was locked a, a couple of days ago, a few days ago. They, they like there was like a certain time where it was like the cutoff and like whatever the leaderboard was at that time. That's what it. That's what it was for the top 700. It was a couple of days ago. Um, and I think for the tiebreaker, it's not what was the leaderboard at that specific time. I think with the tiebreaker, it's just what what is your very best throughout the entire 
season, which was the two months, what was your very best place? You know, like, so was your very best place first or second or third? So like maybe I'm behind a hundred people, right? Maybe there was a hundred people that were like, you know, 50th or better or something. So, you know, it's maybe it's not like actually a very good chance because I think that's what it is, is what was your best um, placement on the, the leaderboard at any specific time. But I guess we can change this to being four and one. And there we go. That's very anticlimactic, right? Like this, you know, especially for making like, you know, for streaming here, for making YouTube content. This is not very good content of just opponents never showing up. It's not <laughs> not very interesting. But I, I don't get to determine that. I can only, uh, you know, I can only do, you know, I only get to face whoever they tell me to face. And they just keep telling me my opponents don't show up. So I can't, I can't do anything about that. Um, yeah, it's not, not very, uh, not very entertaining, but that's. That's how it is. Good news though, um, I'm I'm back. Power's back. Everything. Um, so we'll be streaming again tomorrow. We'll have meme tier Monday tomorrow. We'll have uh, four new meme tier decks, and I will be uploading those to YouTube. And the YouTube uploads should continue to just keep coming out after that. And I will update on that first meme tier video, like what happened here. Um, if, if I know anything about if I made top 32 or not, like whenever I do know that, of course, I will definitely update y'all, especially, you know, if we make it, but I guess final thing to talk about is our three decks. So we've, we only did end up playing two rounds. The Aphelios Lux deck did get banned each time. So we did not play a single game with the Aphelios Lux deck. Um, but it was probably going to be pretty good. We played two game, two games with this Gangplank's Fate. I had not played this deck before, but um, viewer in chat, Kordak, you're, like like y'all know, I didn't I didn't uh, prepare any the week before. They said they played this deck that this was this was like uh, their deck that they enjoyed and and played it in the seasonal tournament in the EU server and went four one with it and liked it and I was, and I was running out of time <laughs> to submit decks and I was like that sounds good we'll play it and I only played two games with it and both games were against the another pirate burn version with gangplank misfortune the smaller version and we had good hands both times won both games um I think our deck did feel pretty well set up in the mirror match having cards like arachnoid century ravenous flock twisted fate also like the, the stun cards there in the mirror match definitely felt good so liked our liked our uh, match up there, um, but then the deck that we struggled with. So we went to, didn't play that one. Went two zero with that one. But then the deck we struggled with ended up going what one and three overall with this deck was the Heimer Ezreal, um, and I think again you know i wasn't really that prepared with it i think that i definitely need a third kindly tavern keeper i think if i would have redone this i, I would have definitely played three kindly tavern keeper and only two feel the rush um i think that that's that's a change that could have definitely had and avalanche looked pretty good I, maybe just play like two avalanche and just not even play static shock i think that um yeah Av avalanche did look pretty good and looked like a necessary card more so than static shock um because I, I think that there's a lot a lot of good stuff going on with this deck, and um, I don't think that it was a bad choice. I think that it, it kind of met... I think it does pair pretty well against the... Um, against all these, like, Twisted Fates, Aphelios decks, like, having um, Aftershock, and a lot of them don't play that much removal. Heimerdinger ends up being pretty good. I like I like what this deck's got going on, and but I think that I, I think those were two small changes I would have done, and I don't think I piloted it perfectly with being a little rusty there question is if i do make the top 32 can i change up the decks for next week yeah yep yep we'll be able to submit three different decks for next week um and yeah there was a lot of aggro and we faced tons of aggro more you know like i yeah so i guess the the metagame was pretty aggressive i should have played three kindly tavern keeper playing a third kindly tavern keeper also would help out um tribe and probulator right just getting another three drop in there helps out and probulator because i think that i think there's a lot of good stuff here against aggro avalanche um, but then, you know, Thermogenic Beam, like, there's a lot of good stuff against aggro in this deck, but I just need, I was, the reason why I was learning, sorry, losing, is because I was getting burned by, um, just, by just burn spells, uh, 
you know, even though I would stabilize, right? Like Captain Farron makes like a couple of decimates. We had we had one opponent kill me with two decimates from Captain Farron. We had another one that just naturally drew three their three decimates. They played three decimates. They drew all three, killed me with those three. Um, and so those those were our two losses to the the burn deck were both of those. And then my other loss was the all in Fiora that we that was that was something different. But the two losses were because of five decimates. <laughs> so I definitely needed a, another tavern keeper to help me stay alive from those. Um, so no, I don't I don't think the aftershocks are too slow against aggro. Like aftershocks really good against misfortune. Um, but then it also kind of helps out. Like we were able to take down gangplanks with having aftershock plus mystic shot and things. I, I think I think that's good. I think that af but aftershock is just so necessary against the Twist of Fate Aphelios deck. Like, because it kills Twist of Fate, kills Aphelios, and kills Veiled Temple. Veiled Temple's a big part of their deck, killing all of that. Um, but they can also go wide with, like, Burble Fishes and Spray Fins and stuff, and so I think that Avalanche is good there, too. So, that's a couple of little changes that we can go. But if, if for some reason, if we are very lucky, and if we do make the top 32 then um, I will be able to have the week to be able to prepare and we can we can submit different decks and um, have uh, even more well-tuned decks for next week. All right, there we go. That's that's the end for the seasonal tournament. Kind of an anticlimactic end, but we did, um, you know, in all intents and purposes, finish four and one. So not, not bad at all. Our best seasonal tournament so far out of the two. Anyway, those of y'all watching on YouTube, leave those comments. Let me know how did you do in the seasonal tournament. Um, you know, I, I'm very interested to hear about that. And, um, you know, just any other comments at all. Um, but thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you for the next video.